Hi, my name is Jessica Morris. I'm an actress from things like One Life to Live and Role Models and many Lifetime movies. Um, and you are watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. From Times Square in New York City, it's FaceTime with Todd Wharton. With special guest, Jessica Morris. And musical guest, Brian Ellis. And now, here is your host, Todd I'm your man, your host, Todd Wharton. Now, if you guys missed it, last week was the 96th Annual Academy Awards hosted by my man, Jimmy Kimmel. Now, speaking of Jimmy, he mentioned on stage that 30 years ago, a man ran on stage naked, and he wanted to replay it in his own special way, a tribute to the streaker, and he invited his man, John Cena, to be a part of it, and John was so hilarious, he played off that he had stage fright. But I'm going to let you guys take a look at this, because this is so funny, in my opinion, one of the funniest moments in Oscar history. And the immortal words of my mother, now I've seen everything. Can you imagine if a new man ran across the stage today? I said, can you imagine if a new man ran across the stage today? Wouldn't that be crazy? What? I can't come there. I'll do the thing. Excuse me for a second. What's going on? You're supposed to run across the stage. I uh, changed my mind. I don't want to do the streaker bit anymore. What do you mean you don't want to do the streaker bit anymore? We're doing it. I just don't feel right about it, man. This is it's an elegant event. You know, honestly, you should feel shame right now for suggesting such a tasteless idea. Uh, it's supposed to be funny. The male body is not a joke. Mine is. <laughs> No, it's not. You wrestle naked, why not? Dude, I don't wrestle naked. I wrestle in jorts. Jorts are worse than naked. Come on. You really not gonna do this? Fine, just give out the award then. God, the worst. Costumes. <laughs> they are so important. Maybe the most important thing there is. I uh, I can't open the envelope oh without my God. the. <sighs> the nominees for best costume design are. Guys, we got a great show for you tonight. Hollywood actress Jessica Morris gonna be in the house. And then later on, Brian Ellis is going to be here performing his hit song, Mix Me, right here on FaceTime with Tom Warner. So guys, stick around, and we'll be right back at the next message. Gun! First came Merton Riggs. I'm too old for this shit. Then came Lee and Carter. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Now meet Detective Irish. And Detective Danish. Hey man, has anybody ever told you you look like that last piece of crap that you tried to kick out of your ass? Welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is a Hollywood actress, and she is famously known for playing the role of Jennifer Rappaport in the hit soap opera One Life to Live. But right now, she's promoting her new feature film that you can catch on Peacock entitled Break In, starring Billy Baldwin, Jonathan Sauter, and of course, my guest coming on right now. Guys, please welcome to FaceTime with Todd Wharton, my girl, Jessica Morris. Jessica, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I love your background back there. It's like you're floating in the sky. 
Great. I love it. I love yeah, it. I love it's it. a nice color for me. So I always keep this up for auditions and everything. And Smart because the blonde hair, the blue, it's perfect. Me, yeah. I, I try to keep a good background so you don't really notice me. So it's like, I no, love your background. Like, yeah, if I have like a white one or something, I just completely disappear with my pale skin and my pale hair and everything. It's like, where? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so we're going to recap right now because a lot of the Gen Z's and stuff, I want to understand this lady's doing a lot right now. You know, she's definitely known for herself for all One Life to Live. If you guys don't know, you can check it out on YouTube or whatever, replaying the soap opera, One Life to Live. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, um, I mean, one wedding show. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. Um, now, I know you've been on some Lifetime films. And I grew up on Lifetime and Hallmark. I don't know what those channels are about, but whoever wrote the films really hate men. And that's <laughs> like, just... Yes, they do. They do. Have it's you ever it's very that? Women empowering. And like all of the men that play characters in these movies come off so like psychotic or idiotic. Yeah. yeah. I don't even say like my mother, God rest his soul, she loved Hallmark. The best part about those channels was the holiday movies. I'm still, I'm addicted to them, right? The rom-coms and everything. Mm -hmm. But think about the names. Like, you were in a film called, like, it's called The Wrong. Here, it's like, okay, man's in the wrong. And then you had, like, the <laughs> doctor's secret life. Like, okay, the man's got a secret life. It's like, whatever happened to, like, being a woman? You just don't know about it. Like, a good movie like that. I think that would be great. Yeah. Absolutely. It's funny how in the titles, they basically give away the entire movie. Pretty much. Pretty much. But then at the end, it's, you know, you all fall in love and you hug and it's just great. It's great. Oh, it's happy. Yeah, I love happy ending. Well, you know what? Speaking of a happy ending, but more of a amazing beginning. Um, congratulations. You are going into your first year. We got about two months to go on your one year anniversary of your marriage which is pretty cool if i'm yes right oh my gosh um, like i am it's i'm so happy being married i just i was telling my husband a story when i was about 16 years old because i've always been a romantic person and i've always wanted to be married um mm -hmm. i my first boyfriend i had in high school one night after hanging out with him i I came home and I woke up my mom frantically and I told her we're getting married. <laughs> and I just remember her reaction because she knew it wasn't happening really. She didn't want to not support me. So she was just like, that's great, honey. <laughs> and we were laughing about that. And it only took like maybe 30 years, you know, for me to actually get married since that point. But um but yeah and i'm glad that i waited as long as i did i waited until my 40s and ended up with the right person is if i had married the wrong person that wouldn't have been fun and i could have seen myself doing that if, if my life had gone in that direction but luckily it didn't and i waited for the right one yeah and i love that and your mom first of all is probably like okay just make sure you make your bed before you go to sleep that's all i need for you that's all i need for yeah. you to know you know what? She waited till her 40s, which is smart, because a lot of us, I think, uh, get a hold of a relationship really young. And I don't think a lot of young people understand, is it love or is it lust or is it in the moment, right? And yeah. I see more marriages today lasting when they're financially and uh, emotionally, you know, happy with themselves. Mm -hmm. where they can bring that into relationship because I'm from a divorce family and what I've noticed is when you get married really young one of the two parties is always depending on the other party for something where my attitude is I think you should depend on each other for happiness right, right. to fulfill that hole that you have in your heart mm -hmm. and everything else should be on your own choreographers whereas I don't need you for the money I don't yeah. need you for stability I do need you when I'm watching a great movie and I want somebody to smile with, yeah, right? Exactly. I think that's what And also, doing. when you're in your 20s and 30s, you're changing so rapidly. You're still figuring out who you are and who you want to be. Yeah. And so um, you could end up running the risk, you know, if you get married too early, that you, you grow apart from that person. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. 
And you know what? You also go against the whole norm because, you know, for since the beginning of Christ, we've been trying to get our rib back from you guys. And then you go ahead and end up marrying a guy named Rib and just grab it back. And now we got to start <laughs> all over. Exactly. Full circle. Yes. And if you guys don't know, she's married to Rib Hillis. He's another soul backer from Fort Charles, which mm -hmm. is really great. Now, I have this whole theory on how you guys met where you must have been on the same show and you lost both your limbs and he decided, I love her and I'm going to dedicate my arms and legs to her. And then even though he didn't have limbs, he found out a way to grow them back and then he developed a brain tumor <laughs> and then you gave him his brain. And then when he realized he had your brain in his head, he's like, oh, I really love this woman. And now the soap operators got together and became one. And that's how that happened. I like that, that theory. Right? It's about right. Yeah. We so met on a movie set, on a movie yeah. set, actually. And he was um, the lead uh, actor and also one of the producers. And so in the in the casting session, um, I'm normally very professional in casting sessions. I would never try to hug mm -hmm. someone or do anything that was not professional. But yeah. for, for a reason, I think I just, we immediately had some kind of connection and in that callback session, um, I actually asked him for a hug. Oh, really? Over. I was like, can, can I hug you? And I don't even know where that came from. It's not even, it's so out of character for me. I'm not yeah. even normally that friendly to new people, you know? It was just very out of character. But that's, we had this immediate connection right away. And um, within that, you know, month period of time of shooting that movie, um, when I drove away from from that shoot, I was crying, thinking I would never see him again because I had fallen in love with him already. Yeah. Wow. See, that's fate. That's uh, when you're not looking for it, it smacks you. Um, you know, and you want to know something you did, what a lot of people don't do. You just went with your heart and you went with your gut and said, this is it. And here you are, you know, and yep. uh, that's probably how you want to do life as an actor. Um, you go with your gut, you go with your heart, and that's when you fulfill your life and mold and passion comes out in ways that you never thought would be possible, which is really okay. cool. Yeah. Now, speaking of passion, um, you know, if people don't know, you were in the Netflix series, uh, The Upshaws with Wanda Sykes, which is a great series. Obviously, you did Party by the Reboot. Well, let's talk about right now what you got going on. So um, I haven't seen the film yet. I did watch the trailer. Um, and when I was telling Scott Hayes, who I interviewed before, the best trailers that I've ever seen are the ones that pique your interest, but don't show too much. Mm -hmm. okay? I watched your trailer, Breaking, with um, Billy Baldwin, Jonathan Stoddard. Um, very suspenseful. Um, I think it's a more of a subject that won't happen to anybody. Tell me about right. this character and how you got into it because you're in a relationship in this film where it's the scary thing that can ever happen as you float into a new one. But in real life, you're in an amazing relationship. So how did you go from every day going home to this incredible man and now you're going on set and you have to be the opposite now of what you are in reality? I'm not going to lie. It is more challenging, um, you know, when you're unhappy in your personal life and you have to play a character who is unhappy as well, I mean, I guess you're not really acting much, right? You're yeah. just kind of feeling the feelings that you're already feeling. But, um, you know, I joke with Rib that I'm like, how dare you? You ruined my acting career for making me so happy. <laughs> but no, I, I can still I can still do the scenes that I need to do and, and play these dark moments. Um you know, it takes a little more work because it's not, you know, when you're when you go home to a very happy, you know, home life and then you have to go to work and pretend like everything's just, you know, so angsty. Um, it just it takes a little more digging. You have to dig a little deeper for for those, you know. Um, but, you know, life always deals you out things that you can use, um, which I'm an actor who does use real life experiences quite a bit, kind of like intermingled with the imagination. but um yeah no matter how happy anyone is you know life can be a challenge and and present you with things you know family deaths or things like that that um that fuel you in those moments when you need them 
Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was interesting. And I, I, what I liked about that character is even though she was kind of a victim throughout a lot of it, in the end, she becomes strong and gets her revenge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I love the, I love the trail part of it. Uh, guys, you got to see this film. Um, I mean, you basically play a woman from what I'm understanding, you're married to a very heavy hitter power man. And obviously you weren't, you weren't happy, but it seems like you were having an, an affair with somebody who I think you fell in love with. And I think he found out. And when you're with somebody who's got power, they take that power into a new level right. and become stalkering. Because that's the one thing about life is it doesn't matter how much money you have. Um, the heart wants what it wants. And if somebody that you're with doesn't want you anymore, people assume like, well, I have to get her back. And this film is so suspenseful. How did you love playing opposite Billy Baldwin, who's been in so many great films and the family itself? Um, how'd you like working with uh, Billy? Yeah, I mean, he he's, you know, such he's quite a name and his whole family is. Um, but, you know, it wasn't anything that felt intimidating because he's so down to earth and such a hard worker that being on set with him it was very easy. And, um, you know, chatting with him in between scenes um, felt very natural. He was just a very, you know, open and giving actor and just a nice person. So it was a great experience. All right. And Jonathan Stoddard, um, he's uh, been around for a little bit. Uh, he plays uh, the man that you fell in love with. How do you like working with him as well? He's so fun. Yeah, we were just yeah. we were just laughing the whole time. Like um, we got the giggles quite a few times. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's great. I can see why he works a lot because he's a very talented actor. Well, you're not so you're not so bad yourself. I mean, you got the talent oh, you as well. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. And I mean, I, I will revert back a little. And I always tell people that the hardest job I think in Hollywood is being where you kind of started out was a soap actor because people don't realize when they're like, oh, you know, it's all this. But like, guys, you don't understand when they hit the set, they don't get lines. They get monologues, and it's like you got to memorize that in a certain time. And then when a lot of soap actors hit the big screen, hit other shows, you are so seasoned and so good. And I'm so glad to see more soap actors getting into roles that are not soap. Because um, I don't think sometimes soap actually does you justice because of the time frame that you give. Because I think it's hard sometimes to get into that character because of the long monologue you got to do. How do you feel yeah, about that? It's well, not conducive to doing your best work because you get like one take and there's hardly any angles. You're just shooting with three cameras and then, yeah. yeah. So it's not, you know, there's really great actors in soaps that sometimes are not made to look, you know, their best or they're not shown in the best light because of the way it's shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. But, I you know, that. even though I'm normally very good at dialogue because of working on a soap and I have a pretty good memory, but I just um, wrapped something where I played a, a seismologist um, mm -hmm. and like in an earthquake movie. And yeah. it was all just very scientific jargon. And I have to say that was difficult. I was messing up a little bit and I had to kind of like take it back. I'm like, OK, tectonic AI. What is that? Like I had to kind of take oh, it back, God. you know, just things were getting jumbled in my mouth. I had this one line where I had to very urgently ask someone, did you get in touch with Colonel Silas yet? And I I could not stop laughing because um, I turned to the actress and I said, have you gotten in touch with Colonel Sanders yet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came out. And then we were all just laughing. The director's like, let's go, let's stop laughing. But I'm like, I was so urgent. I was very urgent for fried chicken, I guess. And then I'm like, Maybe I was hungry. I, yeah. I hope that the directors have seen this because I have an I have an idea. They should throw it into the end as like a like a goof clip. It's having you say that and having like Colonel Sanders hop on set with the bucket of chicken and be like, "Hey, <laughs> I heard you. I heard you asking about me." And then they just go to black. Yeah, that would be hilarious. I wish that they would, would do. Awesome. It. No, <laughs> I, you know what it is. I love when people honestly screw up a little because. First of all, you're human. You're not going to remember everything. Even guys like Tom Screw Cruz mess up a little once in a while. Yeah. And I love how they put the bloopers in the end because they're taking mistakes, but they're making it more of a movie out of it and showing your human side. Right, right? yeah. 
It's the best part. And yeah, you know, the colonel said, and it, that's hilarious. Like, I know. Is... <laughs> I was like, I, I couldn't love... believe that came up. You just see my face. My eyes just went really big. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. It was... Oh my God. I love it. I got to ask something to that. Um, do you, do you mind if I ask, what is the name of this movie that you just wrapped on? Are you allowed to talk about it a little, uh, or is that still it's called, um, it's called Continental Split. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to show on Tubi, but I'm not sure when. Oh, very cool. So this is, like you said, it's about the earthquake AI happening right mm -hmm. now. Explain what, if people aren't sure, explain what that actually means, the earthquake AI uh, significance of that. Uh, well, basically, the AI was just like helping them to figure out where the you know pressure points were. Um, don't ask me to talk about the scientific stuff because I don't I really remember what I was even saying. <laughs> but no, it's just basically a disaster movie. Uh, and this your first one, so this is obviously a different role that you've ever played before. Oh yeah. So this and this and this is so you go going from suspense drama right now to a full on action film. Are we seeing more action films in the future of Jessica Morris? Is that what we're seeing here right now? I don't know. I mean, I enjoy it a little bit, but it is a little scary. Like, I, you know, pretending like, you know, we had to be like, okay, now a tower's falling and then jump out of the way. And, and now there's this swinging and, you know, um, it was it was difficult. You know, I'd never had that kind of experience where you have to really imagine that things are happening. And I imagine it's like that with bigger movies, like Marvel movies, you know, you do things on green screen and you're pretending like, you know, something's coming at you, but nothing's really there. Um, it's a different kind of challenge that I had never experienced before. And I'm appreciative of the opportunity. And, you know, if other roles like that came up, I mean, sure, that would be amazing. Um, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Nothing great ever comes easy. And yeah. I'm sure you're going to be excited. Like you said, it's been on the green screen. You had a lot around you. We'll wait until mm -hmm. you see the final cut. And then you're right. going to be like, wait, hold on. That's what, I, that's crazy. Because yeah. now it's going to be like, you know, the twister and the earthquakes. Because I love those type of movies because they're mm -hmm. so suspenseful. But it's also the type of movie that could actually happen in real life which is the sure. most scariest part about it and uh you know even though you mentioned ai ai is now reality you know mm -hmm. ai is the terminator today of the 2020s which is the scariest thing in the world whoever thought that artificial intelligence would actually exist where mm -hmm. we're up against it even though some of it is good but it's also scary at the same time when i was talking to madeline Horcher from um while i'm leaving big sky we spoke about that. How scary would it be if you turned around one day and there's an AI just with Morris performing in the film, which is one of the reasons why SAG obviously went on strike because it's like you're yeah. taking away the gift of the real actor. You know? If I saw an AI version of myself, I would take that bitch out. Yes. yes. I love <laughs> it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That would be the coolest film <laughs> ever. Yeah. It would be Fight Night, WWE, The Rock introducing Jessica Morris AI versus Jessica, Jessica Morris, the real deal. <laughs> love I it. am all there. I am front row, all about it. You know, let's get ready to rumble type of deal. Jessica, you have an amazing personality. Let me tell you something. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely think you would be great in some comedy movies, to be honest with you. That would be I really do. Listen, some of the greatest actors out there, comedy, drama, suspense, you know, it seems like you have the package. And um, congratulations on waiting this long to finally live the dreams of having a life with a significant other, especially somebody who's in the same field. That's kind of hard to do sometimes because uh you're always working but uh right. i'm psyched about breaking it i definitely can't wait to see this film and i think my uh fans are going to be uh excited about it too awesome thank you so much yeah you're welcome guys if you don't know you can check out breaking it's on peacock and roku and it's available to you right now uh jessica thank you for being a guest on this time with Todd Warren. it was such a fun to talk to you yeah, it's been so fun you got it. Well, enjoy the rest of your night. And I'm going to talk to you soon on your next adventure right here on the show in New York City. Bye.
All right, guys, don't go anywhere, because coming right back, Brian Ellis will be here performing his hit song next to me, right here on FaceTime with Todd Warden. So stick around. You're at your mother's? I have to fix it up and get ready to sell, and I figured I would just stay out here for a little while. What are you doing? It's been a couple months. When are we going to finally stop sneaking around? In your prenup, if you are unfaithful, you Robert doesn't even know the meaning of the word nothing. He's in business with a lot of powerful people. And if I don't play this right, he can make it very difficult for me. Are you having me followed? Maybe. I had Saul upgrade the security system. All set. Looks like your mom spent a fortune on the artwork. My mom's art collection is worth more than enough to support me for a little while. <laughs> Cell phone service is pretty spotty out here. You better be kidding me. All your mother's windows are shatterproof thermoplastic. Mm. I'm back with your soup. You're about to watch my new music video next to me right here on FaceTime with Todd Ward. Check it out. Thank my guests, Jason Morris and Ryan Ellis, for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden. 
guys, definitely go check out Break In. You can find it right now on Peacock. Amazing, amazing feature film. And of course, follow both of these amazing individuals on Instagram, Jessica Morris and of course, Ryan Ellis. Now guys, it is St. Patrick's Day weekend. So please have a great time and drink responsible. But until the next time, everyone, if you're not living a passionate life, and news like you live, take care guys, I'll see you soon.